All right, so on this handout, handout number two, we started on page two, but let's back up to page one, because how do we know if we're being effective with any of this? I want to sell cupcakes, and obviously I can tell if I've sold cupcakes or not. I can look at my, you know, at my books, I can, my bookkeeping, I can see what I've sold and such. And I can tell you, for example, when I work with some of these clients, the, the restaurant, for example, we write a blog post on a particular dish. They also sell uh, roasted quail. Uh, the owner tells us, oh, you guys were posting on Twitter or Facebook about this, and suddenly I'm selling more roasted quail. So that's one way to see how effective we are. But that's not always going to be possible for you to see that kind of result. Um, that's why we have to set up these webmaster tools, which is all of what I've got here on the first page. The webmaster tools are the official tools from Google and from Bing. And uh, these will tell us what are the keywords that people are searching for. Uh, I might not have an idea of my keywords. Maybe I developed some last week, but this will tell us keywords that people searched for when they found me that maybe I didn't even think of. This will also tell me where my traffic is coming from. Uh, I'm posting something on Facebook and Twitter, but which of the two is working better? This will tell us. And so, all of the detail is here, we just need to set it up. And as I said last week, you should come with your password. If you don't, you'll be able to do this later, but I'm going to proceed as if, as if you have this. And uh, I'm going to show this, and again, everyone's going to be a little bit different, so I'll show this as generically as possible, then we'll take a few minutes. If you want some individual help, we'll take a few minutes to do it individually. Not a whole lot, because we've only got two days to work and more things to learn. So I've got a section on Google and a section on Bing. What we're going to do is the Bing section first. And when we learn this, we'll be able to apply it to Google. But the very first link that I have here on the Webmaster Tools, if you click on Bing, it'll ask you to open it up in the web browser. So go ahead and click on that. And then that'll open your web browser and take you to the Bing Webmaster home page. <coughs> and that's basically the manual for Bing, how to use it and set it up and such. Bing Webmaster Tools, it'll show you all your data, your traffic, all of that stuff. The algorithm, how it all works, frequently asked questions, what happens if my site is marked with spam, this will analyze your site if there's something bad on your site also. We're not going to look at all of these screens. It's your job to look at these screens and, and learn what's here. And yes, it is technical, but so is this whole thing. All of this SEO, it's, it's not difficult, but there's a lot to look at and understand. And if I've got the time, if you've got the time, you can understand it because there's a lot of help. It's all explaining it there. And basically, you want to do this for Bing and for Google, because those are the two things that are going to drive your traffic. People aren't looking in the phone book anymore as much. They're looking on search, either Google or Bing. And as we talked about last time, Bing is very valuable because it has 20% market share and climbing. Google is obviously very valuable because it's the biggest one. So you'll look at that on your own. I'm going to go back to my handout. Being a rival search engine and one that's rising has its own advice to help webmasters rank well. You'll find that many of the same concepts apply to both search engines with minor variations. What we're going to do is add our site to Bing and verify it. <coughs> Once I verify my site, it will give me my traffic reports and such. Um, it'll, it can give me alerts if my site has a problem. We'll talk about the concept of a sitemap and why that's valuable in a little bit. But there's a link there for more knowledge about sitemaps. Um, and then we've got link additional sites. We can link other sites to our site, like Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. Because modern SEO is not just about what you do on your site, it's what you do outside your site. This is SEM. In short, this means your business should be also be active 
on social media like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc. And there's a bunch of them, like Peach. Bing provides a screen for you to add your additional sites. It uh, lets Bing know you also are on Twitter. So it'll link it, it'll give you your stats and everything. The whole point of all of these webmaster tools is to gain knowledge. And what's the old saying? Knowledge is power. Once you know where your traffic is coming from, that can help you make decisions. If I'm trying to get traffic from Twitter and Facebook, and my webmaster tools tell me Twitter is working better, I can either increase my efforts on Twitter, or keep my efforts on Twitter stable, but increase my efforts on Facebook to reach more people, or say Facebook's not working at all, I can direct all my time and effort over to Twitter. And the link to actually set this up is right here, bing.com slash toolbox. So on your web browser, go ahead and go to bing.com slash toolbox. So the web address, bing.com slash toolbox, we will go there. And here it's going to ask you to either sign in or sign up. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email address? If you've got Hotmail, it will let you just easily sign in. If you don't have Hotmail, you can use your Gmail or Yahoo or whatever you have. You have to sign up. So let's take a moment here. Either click sign in if you have already an account. But I'm going to go through this as if I don't have an account. I'm going to click sign up here. This is free. Um, I recommend that you do this while we're here in class so I can help you if you have problems. If you don't want to do it here, do it at home. Follow the video. Do we have to either sign in or sign up? And remember on the first day of class I mentioned that you can either do organic SEO or paid SEO. Look at this. If I sign up now, I will receive $100 credit to market on, on Bing. So I can start some of these paid ads on Bing to start to get me more traffic just by signing up. Because Google is the biggest one. Bing is second place, but they're doing things to try to get more foothold. This is one of them. I'm going to click on that sign up process and I'll show this to you briefly. You're going to have to either sign in or sign up and then we'll proceed. Question. That's what I'm about to show right here. If you've got Hotmail, just sign in. If you don't, we're going to click sign up here. And then it's going to say, would you like to use your existing email, such as Yahoo, or Gmail, whatever, right here, your existing email, or would you like to create a brand new Microsoft account? It's up to you to decide. If you use an existing email, it's less for you to remember. But if you create a new one, it'll separate it, and that might be useful. So yeah, it'll ask you for a bunch of things. You want to fill this all in. These computers have deep freeze, which is that everything that you do on the computers will erase once you restart the computer. So if you're worried, I don't want to put in my private info on a public lab, well, it'll erase when you turn it off. So you can fill this in truthfully, first name, last name, all of that. You can use your current Gmail or click get a new address and then you can choose Outlook or Hotmail, create a password, choose your region, birthday, gender. Uh, I believe you can skip the phone number if you don't want to put a phone number, but the value of putting a phone number is that if you get locked out of your account, if you forget your password or someone hacks it, you can use your phone number to retrieve your account. If you don't have an alternate email address, you don't have to put that. But I have never been harassed. I've never been called by, by Microsoft to try to sell me something. Yelp does that all the time, unfortunately. But with here, I've never been called to say, would you like to buy this? Would you like to buy that? So phone number should be safe. Question. Yeah, I, 
so you were looking at it like this username and you put in an, an email address this is just optional this is saying get a new email address if you would like so let's all take a moment to try to either sign in or sign up <coughs> so take a moment to either sign in or sign up if you would like to. If you want to do this at home on your own computer, that's fine. Uh, all of this at this point that we're about to do is optional, but if you would like to see exactly what I'm seeing, you should sign in or sign up. So take a moment to do that. I will sign in with one of my accounts that's already set up, so my screen might not look exactly like yours. And usually I, for a while, since I've taught these classes for a while, I've been trying to create different accounts, and at a certain time I run out of email addresses. So. I'm just going to log in with my existing credentials. If you're brand new to this, it might ask you a bunch of extra questions. You should fill them in as best as possible. If one doesn't quite make sense, there might be a help button next to it, or you can ask me. But eventually, it'll ask you, it'll get you through, and then you'll get to a screen that looks like my sites. So if you're doing this, like me, how many of you have reached the screen that says my sites? Raise your hand. Beautiful. Okay, anyone need any, like one more minute to get it done if you're doing it? Any help real quick? Yeah. Okay, then back up and click sign in and see if you remember a password. If not, then you'll just have to retrieve it.
you want us to add on the URL though? No, as long as you get to this site, then I'll explain what we do next. <clears throat> so because of interest of time, I'm going to move on. If you haven't quite gotten to this point, that's okay. Remember, I'm recording all of this, but I need to move on. So at this point, um, I get to this screen, and eventually, I'm going to have a bunch of data right here. And the thing about this is that I can track my traffic of more than one site. I might be, like myself, a web designer, and I am tracking the data of several clients. They will all show up here. I might just be myself, but I am an entrepreneur, and I have lots of ideas, so I've got a website for my bakery, and a website for my artwork, and a website for my uh, babysitting site. So all of my sites, I can put in here, and either I will add the site up here or here. It's the same thing. So at the top where it says enter site URL, that's your web address for your website. So type in your web address. Let's say I've got http colon slash slash uh, victorsamazingcupcakes.com. Whatever my web address is. You don't need the www part. You can put it if you want. doesn't matter. But putting your web address and add. We get to a screen. Mine looks like this, but yours may ask you for more for more fields. They're straightforward what it's asking you, so you should fill them in. But if you have a, a question or hesitation, there's usually this little info icon next to it that hopefully helps you. Or you can ask me, of course. But what this is asking for is now a site map. The site map is basically a list of all of the pages on your site. In the real world, when you go to the mall, there's usually a directory, a map of the whole mall of every store. So let's say <coughs> I go to some other city, and I want to go to a mall, and I want to find a particular store. How many of you are going to wander around the mall until you find the store, as opposed to Go to the directory, find the store you want, and go to the store. Um, here's the same thing. The search engine is going to wander around your site trying to find everything about it. It's going to crawl your site. Uh, you often hear the term of spiders, internet spiders, or web crawlers. These are basically little automated programs that the search engines employ to browse every single link, everything on your website, to know about it. So that when someone searches how to get an FHA loan, and I've got a page on my site that says that, my page could show up on results. So a sitemap is very valuable because it tells the search engine everything that's on my site. Unfortunately, the sitemap is a very complex file. It's not simply that you open Microsoft Word and you write a list of all your pages. That is not a sitemap. A sitemap is a technical document built in XML code. So basically, Normal people, and even myself, that I've been doing this for 15 years, I'm not going to write a sitemap on my own. It's a very technical document. If you've got something like WordPress, we have a plugin that will create a sitemap. And better yet, it will update the sitemap automatically every time you've, got, you've added something new to your site, and it lets the search engine know there's a new page on my site. That'll also happen on Wix and Squarespace. All of these modern web building tools will have some sort of sitemap feature. Um, I'm going to assume at this moment that I don't have a sitemap. So I won't fill anything in. I can add it later. If you have a sitemap and it is set up, oftentimes it looks like the name of your website slash sitemap.xml. Don't type that unless you know that that's your sitemap address. How do you know what it is? You have to look it up. But my sitemap. I will add it later. I can add it later. But it's a highly important piece of information to give the search engines. When do you see the mo receive the most traffic to your site? These spiders, these web crawlers, are going to visit your website uh, and look for everything that it can about you on your website. Therefore, it's going to drive traffic from the search engine to your site and it's going to check on a regular basis if there's anything new. Since you're getting traffic to your site, that could slow down your site. Here, the search engine is going to check on your site at various times throughout the day, slowing down your site. 
Not a whole lot, but if you've got a big complex site, it could slow down your site when the search engines look at your site. And that's ironic. We want traffic to our site, that too much traffic to our site could slow us down. And so here we can tell it the most popular time of the day of our site is, for example, 9 to 5. Therefore, Bing and Google, don't visit my site during that time. Don't slow down my site during that time. I don't know what the most popular times of day of my site are to decide. So by default, I'm going to leave it as all day. And later on, once I gather the data, I can change that if I want so that the search engine works on my site more efficiently. I don't know that yet, so I can't change it. <coughs> so for both of these, I will not put anything I don't really know it yet. So I'll click Add. And again, if your screen has more boxes, fill them in as best as possible. Or skip them, and you can fill them in later. Skip them if it lets you skip them. Usually it's dot XML. Mm -hmm. I'll add my site. And the great thing about Bing and Google Webmaster Tools is that they'll give you all of this data, all of these statistics about the traffic to your site. The keywords people search for, their most popular pages, where your traffic is coming from. What's to stop your competitor from seeing that information of yours and taking advantage of it. This is what's to stop it, verification. Because I could try to do the, the opposite as well. I could try to see what my competitor's traffic looks like, but I'm going to be stopped by this as well. It says verification. Because if someone asks me, where do you live? I'm going to say, that mansion up in La Jolla. But no one's going to believe it until I walk up to that mansion and have my butler unlock the door. Now, that's what we're doing here. We need to verify with Bing that this is your website. Not to just, just because I'm, claim, I'm saying this is my website, will they believe me? I have to verify it. We have three possible ways. You do one of the three. You don't do all three. And I'm going to say right away, number three, don't even try. Don't do number three. I have a hard time with it. I don't do it. So you shouldn't do it. This is to verify with your service provider, and it's not really going to be that straightforward. I've got GoDaddy, you can select GoDaddy, but don't even try that method. It's just going to give you instructions what to do. It's still complicated. Don't worry about option three. You're going to do either option one or two. I'll explain in detail what they are, and then we'll take a moment to maybe do a little individual help with this. Option one is that you're going to download this file, and then you're going to log into your service provider to the file manager and upload the file to your website. Only you have your password, not your competitor. So only you will be able to download this file, upload it to your site, and when I return back to Bing, click Verify, and it will search for the file on your website, bingsiteauth.xml. When it sees it, it'll say, great, you say who you are, your site is verified. That's one option. You can instead, because it's one of these, not all of them, you could instead do this option. You go to edit your website. These two are different. One is logging into your website to upload a file. One is editing your website. You edit your website, and you add this one line of code to the head section of your default web page. <coughs> Come back to Bing and click Verify. It'll look on your home page, it'll look for that code, it finds it, you're verified. It doesn't find it, you're not verified. Both of them are technical. Um, that's why we're going to take a couple minutes. I'm going to pause the recording. We're going to take a couple minutes. If you'd like to try to do this right now, call me over and I'll help you, because everyone's a little bit different. And we'll proceed. So this is first come, first serve. We'll take a